In this video clip I'm going to show you how to use a blue LED flashlight or torch to provide an illumination source for a simple microscope. And that way we can do fluorescence microscopy uh, for maybe a few tens of dollars maximum. So for the light source we're going to use a LED torch buy it online for about eight dollars. The important thing to look at is that it's got a single chip as the light source. You don't want a ring of LEDs otherwise you can't focus it to a small spot. So here's a diagram to show the basic illumination system. You can use a blue LED flashlight or torch. Uh, we can use a laser pen but there are safety issues and I'll cover that in a separate video. Uh, so we shine a, a blue light onto the sample and then have a yellow blocking filter in front of our objective lens. So with a dissected microscope there's plenty of room to mount the yellow filter. Uh, with compound microscopes, depending on the design, the filter can either be um, inserted in the body of the microscope or maybe cut from a piece of celluloid and, and rested in the eyepieces. So that's a little bit more complicated. So this is the 455 nanometer blue LED torch flashlight that I've adapted to drive from the mains. I've simply connected um, one lead to the outside of the case and the other lead to the terminal uh, near the light head and just put three volts across it and you get um, a nice bright blue light out. So if we shine the light on the wall here you'll see that that's the bright mode. Um, this one alternates between bright, dull and flashing. So we want to use it on the bright mode but you see the spot is pretty large so you can focus that by moving the lens forward and it forms an image of the chip about uh, a couple of centimeters or so um, square. So that's a little big and we need to concentrate that light down and the simple way of doing that is to simply take the lens off another torch of similar specifications, combine the two, and then we can focus it down to a much smaller spot. So now I've attached the two lenses together, and now when we put this against the wall we can see it focuses down to a spot of uh, a few millimetres, and that's um, nice and bright and about the right size to illuminate um, a sample under a dissecting microscope. The other thing we need is then a filter to block out the reflected blue light and just look at the fluorescent light which will typically be a longer wavelength in the green for things like fluorescein and green fluorescent protein or in the case of Nile red in the all the way from the green orange through to the red. So for that we need a yellow blocking filter. I've got a, a camera filter here that um, is a fairly uh, strong yellow colour and if we put that in front of the blue light you can see it cuts out most of the light. It does actually let through um, some greeny blue light and a research grade filter which would cost uh, upwards of thirty forty dollars or so uh, this one was only about five dollars um, would block that entirely so that's what you pay for with filters is a sharper cut off. Another source of um, yellow filter are celluloid filters um, these are often rather pale but if you can find a nice deep yellow filter you can then cut that to, to shape and as we'll see we need uh, possibly different ways of attaching this to the microscope so we'll come back to the celluloid filters in a moment. So this is the final arrangement we attach the LED light source to a small tabletop tripod so we can get the right height and angle onto our sample uh, in this case I've actually tapped into the microscope power supply simply taking the contacts from the internal battery and brought it to a little connector on the outside and also put a switch in the uh, 
circuit so that I can simply control the on off uh, switch of the uh, light source there rather than trying to move the uh, LED itself which gets jogged if you touch it. And then the other thing we need to add, um, if you look more closely at the turret here, I've put the Petri ditch which will have our sample in on top of a Talanti ice cream jar lid simply to make some space. This hole here means that our light source or our, our diffuse disc isn't directly under our sample. That gives us a lot of scattered light so by having the sample a little bit away from that we get less reflected light problems. The other thing we need to do then is add the other filter and I've already glued a stepping ring to the objective here that's got a 37mm thread which is useful for adding other optics and that's where we're going to put our yellow filter. So we've now got a yellow filter on there so now the blue light's going to excite fluorescence and the emitted light, either green, orange or red, will go through the yellow filter and we can see the fluorescence. So that's pretty much all there is to the setup. As I say, if you don't have that filter attached there, you can use some uh, celluloid and maybe stick on a little magnet just to hold it onto the, uh, the turret there so it's easy, easily removable. And then for our fluorescence, we switch on the light source like that and now this is focused to give us a bright spot um, which we then line up with our sample and now we can move the petri dish around examine all the contents and the spot will just light up the few millimeters under observation it is the setup with the compound microscopes and again using the blue led mounted on a tabletop tripod. Uh, so the only thing we've got to do now is introduce the yellow filter. Which on this microscope is straightforward. So we can remove the headpiece and simply drop the filter in the port there. If the microscope doesn't come apart at this joint here then the other options are either to unscrew the objective and cut a piece of celluloid right shape and just insert it between the objective there or take out an eyepiece and put a circular piece in there just temporarily with tape. Here are some example spectra of a blue LED, a 450 nanometre LED in the blue but it also gives out some greeny blue light and the cutoff filter I'm using, or the yellow filter here blocks the blue light and transmits green, yellow, orange and red light. You see there's an overlap region here which lets some of the excitation light through so we see this greeny blue background. A research grade filter has a sharp cut off so a 515 orange or yellow glass filter would then have a very sharp cut off this shape. This has some advantage because you actually see the background as scattered light and as an example is a uh, cigarette butt fibre um, in water uh, viewed by bright field. We just see this fine plastic fibre. So this field of view is a couple of millimetres or so. And then turning on the LED light and viewing through a yellow filter, we see the red fibre stained up with now red dye. So that's just one example of how we can use an LED to uh, with a uh, microscope for sensitive detection.